Hello and welcome. London-born Sir David Lean was one of the world's greatest film directors whose movies included Best Picture Oscar winners Lawrence of Arabia and The Bridge Over the River Kwai, as well as Brief Encounter, Dr Zhivago, Ryan's Daughter and A Passage to India. Major directors including Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, Stanley Kubrick and Spike Lee have all cited Lean as a significant influence on their careers. Now, this rare and fascinating audio is a recording of a media lunch Sir David hosted in a restaurant at the Cannes Film Festival with a select group of international film journalists back in 1988. And if I may, can I suggest you listen to it as you would a podcast with a nice glass of wine or two close at hand. Sir David had come to Cannes to accept a special award for his outstanding contribution to the British film industry but also hoping to realise his dream of directing a movie version of Joseph Conrad's controversial novel Nostromo. He told us that while the film had development financing from Warner Brothers and a number of stars were attached, he was still seeking a producer to put the production together. What unfolded over the lunch was a wide-ranging conversation about his Nostromo plans, but also his opinions on the art of filmmaking, various famous actors and directors, and his plan for a version of the bounty. The six times married Sir David, very much the English gentleman, was in a chatty mood about his remarkable filmmaking career, providing many insights and anecdotes during the lunch. Just very little difference now. It's just about as it was. I mean, I, what is it? Six? I think it's something like four or five minutes gone. But oh, I see. It, it, it looks fine. I don't sort of feel, oh God, what a shame that's been lost. I see. But how long was the intermission? It depends on how much No, but the sound. I mean, I speak of the sound because during the intermission, the sound was going on. No, no. No? That's just to get people back to the seats. It depends how many self drinks. You know, when I saw the film, uh, about 12 years old when it first came out, and yes. they had the intermission. During the intermission, I, I never saw a line that long at the water fountain. It's true. Do you know? I was so thirsty. Do you know? They, they, I was really talking about they, 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 they said that the sale of soft drinks went up three times. <laughs> never been a thirstier movie. Than That's right. I don't know, it's, I, I don't know what's happening. It's happen probably the power of cinema. Probably what yeah. got Coca-Cola interested in. They heard about Columbia. that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was an amazing. Oh my God! <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> <cool. laughs> but as long as the screen's shape is right, you don't have, you know, you don't mind the idea of people looking at a huge epic like this on a little TV screen. I hate it. The, 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 the size is never right. Mm. But you're cooperating anyway. No, but it'll be shown it's on the show, uh, big screen. Yeah. It's be shown. This, is, this is not just the laser. Oh, this, this is the actual reason. This is the actual as well. They're already said they're going to be shown in New York, L.A., uh, Boston, oh, I didn't Washington, Excellent. Okay, London, right. Paris, Excellent. all over the place in Excellent. in seventy. You see, it was shot. Wonderful. It was shot in seventy, mm -hmm. which is a rare phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Generally, these seventy millimeter prints are blown up from thirty five. This was shot sure. yeah. in seventy. You see, they haven't shot a film in seventy for a long, long time. Yeah. So people may be surprised. Uh, no, that's that's how good the photography looks. So yeah. Maybe you know, maybe it'll start a trend to so more people doing it again because it has its early done. Costs a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they yeah. always say nobody will make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's it. Yeah. Absolutely false. Have you read this uh, biography of Sam Spiegel that's come out? Uh, yes. What did you think about it? Well, I was astounded that he'd been in prison three times. I knew he'd been in once. Did the man interview you? No. Because I spoke with Kazan and he told me the same. He said, you know, he did a biography without, even without uh, interviewing the people. Kazan that's said that's he never came to see me. I'll tell you the interesting thing. Every time I was mentioned, which was quite a bit, it was slightly wrong. <laughs> So I presume that the whole book is slightly wrong. Yeah. On, on the waterfront side, you did not uh, contact him at all. Is that the same with all the directors? Uh, Houston was he? Houston well, apparently, David Lean was not contacted. That's incredible. Yeah. Was not contacted. 
Yeah. Which is very contrary to the American biography. It's I know. generally very well researched. Yeah, yeah. He's English. Yeah, he is an English, actually. Uh, Andrew Sinclair, no? Yeah, Andrew Sinclair. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. He directed Under Milkwood. Well, he wrote a biography of John Ford. Really? Yes, and he worked on... And he directed uh, Under Milkwood. Sort of. Yeah. Well, what do you mean by sort of? Well, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a... Um, Under Milkwood? Yeah. He didn't even... Yeah. But this is not true. No, Andrew Sinclair oh, directed the film uh, of Under Milkwood about visual, 15 years ago. Oh, a visual recording of a reading of the play in a different location. I mean, it was, it was a film, but I can't even he's never directed anything before or since. Well, with Peter O'Toole and... Uh, with Peter O'Toole. Richard Burton was the, uh, really? the main yeah. voice. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. Good Lord. Played Captain Cat. Good Lord. Yeah, he was very good at it. Well, his eyes look like he was from a Fritz Lang. Uh, he is very good. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting meeting him the other day. He was very nice. You know, yeah, oh, very. You know, it's very strange sitting there, seeing him on the, seeing himself on the screen, and going up and watching the lips move. Yeah. And I said, you know, Peter, I think you were doing this better than you did all those years ago. He said, well, I'm now capable of playing it. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. How do you explain all this series of films about colonial times? Of course, for you, for you was one of the first ones. Doing this film out of Africa and uh, into the uh, life of Africa. Out of Africa is white goes not really colonial. I mean, I suppose all the old birds are now coming up and looking back on their youth. It's a good way to look at it. White mischief. Oh, yes. What's that like? No? The Daryl Markham has become a cottage industry. There's a film being made, a biography, a biography, a very nice uh -huh. I've read the biography, but I'm saying there's no, films to be no, not uh, West, uh, West of the Night. That's right, something like that. Yeah. Have you read it? Very good. It should be a good movie. It's just curious that Beryl Markham was, as far as movies were concerned, was, was nothing. Then she showed up in a kind of in, in disguise in out of Africa, and her she sort of she's a presence, kind of a criminal screen for white white mischief. And now there's a movie. Yes, now there's a movie to be made. They're making two. <laughs> of course. Well, there, there's one that was already on. Never make just one. Can't help you book right to a book. But one was on television in America last week. Uh, biography, actually, not, not really? a patient of West Virginia, but Tony Richardson directed it in Africa. Oh, yes. oh was that out? That was on TV last How week. How is it? And who was playing? It uh, was supposed to be okay. Uh, I didn't see it. The, the reviews, the reviews were okay. There are two things in the no, in Canada about Africa. And everyone said she surpassed herself. And even better than Chris Mangus. Yes, yes. A world apart. With Barbara Hershey, which is a chocolate trademark in France. There's a Hershey chocolate. Not not only not only Hershey chocolate. You think all those things are good time with that? Barbara Nestle. Yes. Is there a role for Guinness? No. It's a Conrad novel. I suppose there's always a role for Guinness because he can make all the roles. But it, you, um, did, but it would be a sorry. long film too because it's such a, it's such a huge novel, epic length. <laughs> how, do you, how did you sort of settle on uh, on Nostromo rather than uh, any other subject for this next picture? Why are you here instead of being somewhere else? <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> well, that's I said was I. This is the writing. <laughs> Actually, we met we met the. Uh, Three years ago in Los Angeles, I was at the DGA uh, weekend that they had with the um, Todd McCarthy variety, and uh, we talked quite a bit that weekend. Remember, they had a whole weekend. It was just when you brought Passage to India to uh, oh, yes. Los Angeles, and they had a whole weekend of your films. It was a wonderful weekend. I know again. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that's a loaded question. That's, it. that's one of his most difficult novels. Very it's always been very yeah. um, controversial. Some you critics say it's, it's difficult, all right. Yeah. Did yeah. you see the John Cromwell? Was John Cromwell? I never knew that. I didn't Wasn't know there was, that was a, a victory. victory that oh, it's victory. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Thank victory you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Nostromo was never made. Nostromo was never made. Nostromo was never made. Nostromo was never made. It was also by Turner. Victory was made by Turner. Do you think there's a problem in it? Yeah, as a science writer like Conrad, who is so, quote, cinematic. You know, some writers, you read them, they're books and they're like movies. And with Conrad, I think that's true. Is that... Something this you have to fight to this make you feel, to make you see. This, this has some wonderful movie scenes in it. Yeah. It's not written like a movie, really. You know, I tell you a thing, not many people know. Conrad, after a few years, seriously thought of making an opera out of it. Out of the song? Really? Yes. Well, right and, uh, no, I mean, it is that sort of stuff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very much over the top. <laughs> Great fun, outsized characters. You know? hmm. It would have been a good idea. Well, if I may mention the one thing you said that surprised me the most at that BGA weekend was... No, 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 it's just, it just prompted me. Because you, you were asked uh, if you could make anything you wanted as your next film, what would it be? And you said, you prefaced it, you said this is going to shock all of you, but I would love to make a musical. I would. And here's your chance, you can make the no, opera that... You know. the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. I wasn't thinking of that sort of music. <laughs> Yes. The four musicals have been made from your films, from your non-musical films. I mean, on the same subjects. Where are they, Rick? Uh, Bob Lawrence. Oh, Oliver. I tell you what. Well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you I'll, I'll I'll Oliver. 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 No, I, 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 it's also Dickens. It's not only yours. It's the cutter of Pygmalion. Ah. And I remember when Gabby Pascal, who was a dear old rogue, yes. said to me, I think I would make a musical of this. I said, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I thought it was outrageous, but it was just wonderful. Well, I think this happy breed was made into a musical. What's it? I wouldn't have thought this it didn't, run, didn't run very long. No, I bet it didn't. Yeah. Two days. <laughs> was that? You didn't get rights for it? You said there were you said there were two films being made on Beryl Markham there. You probably, I'm sure you know the Christopher. Well, there's Hackman. this one that yes. he was talking about, and and another one based on the title I can't remember. Not very good. West with the night. West yeah. with the night. That's another. One. Which is her, which she wrote, which has got some very good things. Nobody would have heard, thought of making a film with me on Dorjero if Christopher hadn't written it as a play. Yes. And had a great success with it, at least in England. New York as well. New York as well. Yes. It was made as a film. It was made taken off. It was made by Vadim. It was made by Roger Vadim. It was. It was a terrible film. Well, they wouldn't, I mean, this stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to using the title for the first day of the film. It's a highly successful film. But we were strong, but I think we were all naughty. We remember it. Yes. 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 I heard it was John Malkovich and Glenn Close and Michelle Pfeiffer. I think it was Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Freya's is shooting it in Paris now with Scribble. Now. Yeah. Street by Christopher Hampton. Yes, yes. I know that. I Shooting know now. At first, it should shoot now in uh, uh, two weeks. Miller's is starting in July, so... Uh, well, I heard it was postponed. No, no, Stephen no, Fries told me it was postponed. If you can, again, yes. yeah. I mean, July, end of July is the latest I've heard. I think one of them is going to be taken out. Ask Claude Berry. I think one of them is going to be taken out. Usually, the marketing is going to be called two and maybe years on this. He has no interest everybody. Usually when this happens, there's one quality one and one schlock one that's trying to cash in, but in this case, it could be two quality ones. Where has that happened before? I know it has. Uh, there was a doll's house maybe, what, 15 years ago? Losey had a doll's house, and there was yeah. another one. I can't remember who directed it, but it had Claire Bloom in it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Losey had Jane Fonda. Losey had Jane Fonda, Jane Fonda, and there was one with Claire Bloom. And they both were out almost at the same exact time. And I asked Losey back at that time, uh, how did this happen? Why didn't somebody stop? And he said, well, I wasn't going to stop. And he said, I thought, 
rather wishfully. Um, people will want to see both, he said, to compare them. Well, I didn't think that was true, and it didn't turn out to be true. Rather wishfully. <laughs> he said it, though, with, I thought, great conviction. It sounded like he believed it. Yes, yes. Many filmmakers have said that, that the only way to truly judge, say, the Oscar-worthiness of a person's work is to have everyone make the same film. <laughs> That's right. We're on the same subject. Well, there four films this year of uh, generation. But the problem with the Les Andres Rose, which I'm French, is to imagine all this, all typically 18th century French novels, all spoken in English. It's like having the great Gatsby set in France. It's all spoken in French. So the very words. No, but I mean, no, but what about the Chinese? You have kissed Princess Grey. Feeling working in such an epic scope now that that you're sort of apart from what's going on in most of the movie world. You know that. You know, films like The Last Emperor, you know, were so, uh, uh, you know, seem apart from a lot of what's going on and it won so many Oscars. And I think one of the reasons for that may be that, that a lot of people are saying they don't make movies on that, Any that scope. Yeah, I mean, movie <laughs> movies as opposed to films that look okay on the television screen. Uh, there's not much difference between how a film looks on TV and on the big screen. And, and so many of your films uh, are, are direct opposites of that. Is, do you the feel Last like Emperor some... was compared to a, a David Lean Yeah, I mean, everyone uh, compared it, it to your it, films. You know, I, I saw that in London, uh, at the Odeon in Leicester Square, which is a big theatre, yeah. big screen. It looked absolutely wonderful, and the oh, you could have heard a pin drop all the way through it. And I think it's quite a new experience to watch pictures instead of talking heads. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. And you found yourself watching. You know, wonderful, I thought. And uh, it's a new experience. Yeah. That's why I like Peter but Green. For the, for but the, the young old, generation. It's yeah. a new experience because there are so few David Lean-style films nowadays. Well, that sort of thing's out of fashion, isn't it? Yes. Um, Unfortunately. Well, well, actually, as you, know, you, as we'll you must see. know, you were a your major influence on Spielberg for Empire of the Sun. Was I? Do you know, I haven't seen it. Mm. Really? How is it? You needed more influence. Just fine. I <laughs> <laughs> needed more of you and less of him. That's very good. It is good. Along with that. And even Bertolucci talked about the, the irony of coming from a very radical kind of filmmaking 20 years ago and r arriving at his peak by carrying on the tradition of carrying on your tradition. Really? I, I must read these newspapers. <laughs> you know, all the American directors of, uh, of, of that generation uh, who think big always mention you top of the list. Uh, you know, Coppola, Emilius, Spielberg. Uh, you know, they... Uh, uh, it's a shame that they don't allow more of those films to be uh, I guess it is, it, are the budgets so prohibitive now that, that you can't think big? You know, I don't you know. I think most of the production companies can't read uh, nowadays. They get readers to read the scripts. They can read dialogue because they can understand that. They, if you write two or three pages of action, pictures telling the story, they'll go flick, flick, flick to the next bit of dialogue. Yeah, yeah. And it's very difficult, you know, if you think, I think that's really one of the successes of, of Last Emperor, that you know, it's very surprising, isn't it, that every big company turned it down. Mm -hmm. hmm? And this has happened before with some of these pictures. And I think... They wouldn't read. I mean, nobody now, uh, looking back on what I've just been doing, uh, uh, I don't think anybody would back Lawrence of Arabia, because it's nearly all told in pictures. Hmm. It, it's sort of enormous influence of the silent films on my generation's work, mm -hmm. you know, because you had to tell the pictures 
uh, uh, story in pictures, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is fascinating. I still love it, if one can, but it's very expensive. I mean, get two people sitting at a table, take them two shot, over shoulder close ups and two close ups, and you can, if the scene goes on for eight minutes, you can shoot eight minutes a day, easy. But it takes the same time to shoot to light. One long shot of a man running down the street, a la Hitchcock, and diving into a door cut. Three seconds. Yeah. I'm convinced that if most young directors today were forced to make a silent picture, they'd be utterly incapable of doing it. Could be. And in fact, if you watch, my main fascination with watching films on airplanes without the sound is just to see if they can tell the uh, story in pictures, even if it's a film I've already seen. And 90% of the time, they can't. It's just... You're absolutely right. I often don't put on the earphones. And after the first 20 minutes, yeah. have to do so. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I really don't think they can tell the story visually. Just a handful of directors. And it is, it it. is a visual medium. Let's face it, it's almost forgotten. Mm -hmm. hmm? I think television is a bad influence. And people are amazed, you see, when they see. Oh, these old fellows. I know. The other day, Dawn Steele closed down the studio and put them, all 250 of them, in the buses and brought them over to the Academy Theatre. And most of them had never seen Lawrence on a big screen. They were amazed. You know, because they generally see the middle third of the picture. <laughs> that's gone, that's gone, yes. And they don't care at all. They don't care at all. They roll out. <laughs> You know, they don't care, and they, you know, if you, if you know what they do. If, if I'm, sorry, 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 if I'm talking to you, we have a two shot here. I remember on Bridge on the River Kwai, I saw it on television some time ago. They're getting better now, and there was Alec Guinness and Sesu Hayakawa there, and a bottle of whiskey in the middle. And on the television, all it was was a close up of the bottle of whiskey, <laughs> and you couldn't see the other two, you just heard the dialogue over it. I suppose some people thought it was very clever. <laughs> <laughs> well, could, you, could, you see the, could you see the label on the bottle of whiskey? Maybe they were selling the uh, whiskey. <laughs> that came later. <laughs> Goat, it could be. <laughs> like Ozu would always put the bottle so you could read the... Uh, what, yeah? Photographs on the roof now? I've had photographs up there. No, they're Helmut Newton, though. Oh, yes. No, well, not yet. No, not yet. I'm talking no. to these You're guys. happy at the moment, fine. Would you like some food? Absolutely. 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 If any of you would like you some. You can sit down and have a drink and some food, food. while you're talking. Because what about some comedy? Why don't you do that? Yeah. Come to dinner. Come to dinner. Come to dinner. You want some more drinks here? I guess they probably will. Well, what is, yes, what are you drinking? Champagne? Um, I missed the uh, start of the conversation. Did you talk in, uh, at all about the pre production or how far you were on Nostromo? We've finished the script, yes. Finished. So, how far away? Some time ago. How far away from, uh, from starting to shoot? Looks, I think we will start to shoot fairly early in the new year. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And the locations are going to be uh, possibly, possibly Mexico, possibly Spain. It depends on money. Right. Uh, and the air between us, quickly the mix. <laughs> Yeah, it's difficult because yes. if, if you if you if you do a film there, this you don't write down, please. But if you know you do it for a big 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 lot of sets, they've got you by the preferred. Mm. That's mm. it. You know, because they're the biggest crooks, aren't they? And the chief crooks, according to the Sunday Times, <laughs> are the police. Of course, it's it's that way in many countries, unfortunately. Are you, uh, have you stayed very faithful to the book itself, or have you taken... No, it's you can alive. never be faithful to a book when you're doing a great novel, because you're going to leave hoots of it out. Exactly. And an old cliche, you can, be, you can try to be faithful to the spirit of the book, mm. but you know, it's so very different. And when people always blame me for this, I always say, look, the novel's going to last for years. Uh, so don't be too tough on the film. That'll be destroyed long ago. Yeah. Why, why Nostromo? What, what was it that brought you to that? 
Well, several people talked about it. I mean, Robert Bolt always wanted to do a film on it. Uh, he, he always wanted to make a jolly good picture. And uh, then several people I know and trust thought it would make a good film. It's very difficult to read. And I made three attempts at it. And the third attempt, got through and got through it and liked it very much because yeah, as far as the story goes, it sort of gets started around about page 170. As far as the narrative is concerned. So the, so the film will open at around page 170? No, it won't because you see, he starts in the middle, goes to the end in the novel. It's, right. it's terribly complicated. And I have the same thing. Somebody here, the other uh, 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 just now, I was saying that you know, people say that to Nostromo, you have to read the book three times because on the third time you will start to enjoy it. So it's so complicated, and that was what happened when it came out. It, it wasn't, it wasn't terribly popular, you see. And the most of these learned writers who write about Nostromo say that it's because they couldn't understand it. Because, and I put it in time sequence, more or less. I mean, there are some flashbacks, yes, but it's, un it's understandable, you know, which I think on reading the book, it isn't. It isn't. Now, did you take a crack at writing this first, or did Christopher Hampton come in from the very beginning? You know, we worked together. Mm. Mm. Do you, do you have particular actors in mind? Are you hoping for a certain well, cast that... that well, I tell you, the only actor that... Uh, I've, sort of, I've said this before, that the only actor that I know about, because I, I went for him right away, and he's been terribly good about it, because he's waited and waited and waited. And that's Paul Schofield. And uh, I admire him as an actor. I've never met him. You've but never met him? I've never met him, and uh, I like him very much as an actor. And he's, just, he's been very good, waited and waited, turned down things, and he's got uh, a cracking good part. Wonderful. Wonderful part. A part of, uh, called Dr. Monaghan. <laughs> He's supposed to have done the best Lear. Uh, yes, he did it with I Peter saw, Brook I out saw in it, Denmark I saw, or something. I saw it in Paris. He came to Paris. Was it any good? Extraordinary. <laughs> yes. Mm. He's a hell of a actor. But otherwise, the roles are open. Aside from uh, from him. Don't write that. <laughs> <laughs> the phone will never stop. Actually, we saw Paul Schofield in, a, in London about 15 years ago in, in a play like by Chris Hampton. Uh, no, I'm fine. That's right. I think. What was it called? Savages. Oh, yes, about South America. Yeah, I remember that. I, rem I never saw it, but I, I, I read the, the play. I won't think so. Well, it's nice to be sitting here with all you Americans. Very nice to be sitting here with you. <laughs> there have been, there been one Frenchman. No, yeah, I know one. Well, you two. One Australian. You two, because are you Australian? Yes. Really? Are you? Yes. Mm. You've got tough unions over there, haven't you? Uh, they're the getting Frenchman. better. We've just struggled. Excuse me. I'm the French Thanks very much. I'm sorry. Because you know, Americans have been absolutely wonderful to me. Oof. Why is that? You tell me. I don't know. But they have. Because you are a visual director? Mm. I think American cinema is more, on the whole, more visual than British cinema. British relies, no, cinema relies have, more on words. I've had wonderful times. I mean, Time magazine it was wonderful to me on Brief Encounter. They gave it. Um, Hillis Mills was the film critic. And, and I remember seeing it in New York. And I thought it couldn't go there at all. Everybody thought it wouldn't go. And I knew this, that a critic was sitting there in this tiny little projection theatre. And I sneaked in and sat at the back because I wanted to see what the print was like. And at the end, as the titles came up, I slunk out. And a man came running after me. And he said, My name's Hillis Mills, Time Magazine. And um, so I think that's a wonderful film. I said, are you serious? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> he gave it a very, very good write up. And it sort of took off from there and the French. You know, it was. Um, and despite this, this uh, uh, long time uh, uh, mutual admiration, you've never really uh, even come close to making a film in the States, as far as I know, have you? For everything I've done lately is financed by America. Financed by, of course. Never, yeah. I mean, never, never taken okay. an American location. I don't say, of course. American it's, uh, it's, you know, yes. that's, yes. that's so half never a getting never a big American American location. Never, ne never American subject. Or, uh, right. I feel. I wouldn't. I, I'm sort of shy of it because I, I don't know that I know America that well. You know, I've driven across it twice, and that sort of thing. And that's about my chief claim. To well, that's more than a lot of Americans have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are there any American actors you would like to work with, or, or is it... Well, one of my favorites. Well, I, you see, I love working with American-trained actors. Mm -hmm. Tremendously disciplined. Mm -hmm. I mean, people like Bill Holden, mm -hmm. Claude Rains, who was one of my great friends, both Bill and he, mm -hmm. and Claude. Mm -hmm. People like Tony Quinn. Right. Terrific. Right. I mean, Tony... On Lawrence of Arabia, he, he was on a he was on a he had an Arab horse, an Arab stallion, which frightened him to death. It would frighten anybody to death. And we did rehearsals. He was very shaky. And we came to the take, and immediately you'd never know if he had any fear at all. Terrific professionalism, you know. They're wonderful to work with. Um, he's the only lot where I don't yeah. know about today. But there's no new uh, American actor, actress that you might say, oh, that's interesting. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see what he or she might do in one of my films. In one of my films. Meryl no. Streep's not bad, is she? No, she's very good. <laughs> Are there are there women roles in in um, Nos yes. Nostromo? Yes. Mm -hmm. But they're all open at this point in time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, we don't write that. <laughs> did you ever see uh, the film The Stunt Man? Peter yes, I did. Because uh, the word was that the uh, Peter O'Toole character had some resemblance to you. What did you I know that was a that was a publicity stunt, uh -huh. and, and it only applies to the way I smoked a cigarette. I used to smoke sixty a day with a holder, and he copied uh -huh. that like that. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Did you say before? I, and I missed it. I'm not sure whether it was. Uh, where, what, where, where this stands at this point? Has Serge Silverman uh, come on to produce the film, and does he have financing, or is the first part true and the second part is not quite? But I think true. I think it's I think he's going. I hope he's going to be a producer. I think he will. Yes, but it's not all set up in a. No, it's terribly yeah. difficult. Warner's, you know, had the Warner's had a, paid yeah. for the development. Right. Yeah. And uh, I haven't got a producer, and I'd like so. And uh, I think you know, we'll do it together, yes. But is Warner still involved? or is mm, it... Totally. Oh, was, was not Spielberg originally wanted to do it? No. He gave, me, he gave some help. I think he introduced me to Warner's. I think. But he was never going to produce it by, from his no. company? Uh, there were rumors. That's no. what I that's there what were rumors. I heard, yeah. yeah. No. And do you have an idea to shoot uh, later this year or next year? Uh, Early in the spring, in the next year. Mm. Mm. It's a nice place. I saw a shooting of a film in Colombia, in Cartagena. Cartagena. In, de la in Colombia. Yes. They South did. America. They did the mission. Yes. The Chronicle of yeah. Death for Gold. I heard it was terribly difficult. Terribly. Yeah. Terrible. yeah. yeah. Mm. Beautiful location. Yes. Very dangerous. I would think so. Uh, 
How do you feel now about about going onto locations? About what? On to go, going onto locations. Uh, obviously, uh, shooting in Mexico would be a fairly physical. Uh, that's a true yeah, Australian. And we, I know, I know you, many of the films have been shot on location. I was well, wondering I if you'd, <coughs> I you prefer it. it. I like you do it. still. Yeah, very good. much so, yeah. Good, good. One day I spoke with Billy Wilder and he spoke about you and he said, you know, and the opposite of DVD you now, I mean, I, I, I want to work, work in the studio, but every time you go to that area, David Hill would put ropes on the mast of the boat and he would love to direct to a film from it. On the well, Billy's wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you who did do this, because Carol Reed. I don't understand why you want to go and do scenes outside. He said, I get them outside quick as I can in the scene. I pan them against the wall and cut them in the studio. <laughs> What do you think of the cutting in movies now? Since, you know, you, you also um, such renown as a, as a cutter. That do you think that that art has been lost also, or or is this a different style? No, I see one or two television programs that are absolutely... It's always been so, too, of course, that, um, you know, there are some damn good cutters around. Damn good. But there are also a lot of very lazy ones. And I've forgotten what it was, and I don't think I'd tell you if I could remember, but I remember the other day seeing something which was appallingly cut. Just slapped together, you know, number boards cut off, and I think we'll have three feet of that. And that sort of thing. It's a, it's a very, very precise work, and a lot of people can't be bothered. I've been talking about America. I learned all I knew about cutting from an American called Merrill White, who was um, cut several Lubitsch films, and he also cut. Did you see the Mamoulian film that everybody thinks Lubitsch, Love Me Tonight? No, wonderful. Yeah. Extraordinary film. He also started with the wake, Paris waking up in the morning. The song, Just one. The song. You know? And he taught me... He really opened a whole lot of new windows to me. You know him personally or just in his own? No, personally. I, he he Merrill, worked he with Merrill, Merrill White. W-H-I-T-E-M-E-R-R-I-L-L, I suppose. Perfect. He was great, he's dead, he's a great big tall American and was just wonderful. Uh, he, I, he, taught me, he always used to say to me, you know, you can always tell how good an actor is <coughs> by the number of pictures you can use before he opens his mouth and after he shuts it. <laughs> and it's terribly true. Did you hear about the big uh, sensation going on in the Soviet Union right now? You know, they've finally published Dr. Zhivago as a, in, uh, Have they? in the Soviet Union. Yes. <clears throat> and all the directors are stabbing each other in the back in Russia to get the right to be the one to make the Russian film the Russian, of Dr. Zhivago. The Russian version the remake, of Dr. Zhivago. The Russian remake. Yeah, wonderful. So that's, well, that's the big project. Are they going to allow it? Yes, that's the that's the next thing. After the publication of the book, they're going to make, just like War and Peace, they'll make their own version uh, of the... Uh, that would be uh, probably very good, because it will be an enormous great length. Probably six or eight hours. No, but it could be very good, couldn't it? You know, I mean, because it's... Um, I'd love to see that done yeah. that would be in a, Russia, yeah. full yeah. length, you know, one, yeah. uh, not not full length, but I yeah. mean, I'd, like, I'd love to see a four-hour version, four or five hours, but fascinating. But every, everyone is uh, scheming and conniving to be the one chosen to do that. Mm -hmm. Is that really so? Yes, yes. And, and how, how fascinating. And it'll be a prize given by the Soviet film industry, right? Is it whoever, I mean, how do, how do they choose this director? I don't know. It's uh, very political, you know. So it won't be by bidding, obviously. No, I mean, it's influence and uh, a lot of things. The problem is, no, some of the experienced directors are professional, right? Now. 
That's true. Yeah. That's true. And what what, what did he say? None of the experienced directors are fashionable. Are fashionable no. right now. None of the serious right? yeah, no, no, one, no, None of the experienced ones. Experienced. Yeah. Oh, the, ones who, the ones who have been working over the last 20 years are the very ones who won't be selected to do it. I don't think they'll get Brandershut. Well, as he said at a reception recently, alas, I am no longer fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> did he, did he go on to say yeah, what he was? He was in New York at the time. But, yeah. Yeah. How did you come to do these two Dickens in a row? Was it uh, originally? Was it your project, or were, were you hired to do the, you know, what, the Great Expectations? The two what? Dickens books. Yes. You know, the Great Expectations. Yes, yes, yes. Oliver Twist. Was it yes. your idea originally, or yes. and how did it come? You do the, you did the two Dickens in a row? Was because it? I couldn't think of any other subject. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, they're also publishing uh, Lolita this year in the Soviet Union for the first time. Publishing what? Lolita. Because really? Nabokov, well, banned because, well, Nabokov was completely banned. Wicked, yes, yes. No, no, but Nabokov, oh, no. Oh, because he was, uh, of course, of course. he uh, left, uh, you know, of course. unpublished forever. And finally yes, sorry, they I, I, got, I you know, yeah. yeah. They started publishing, uh, I don't know, and uh, they started with a few short stories, and now I think this year Lolita's coming out, uh, so everyone's eagerly awaiting that. Next thing they'll be showing the notch. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like Kubrick's work? Do you like Kubrick's work? Very much. You know, I think, what, what, what is the, uh, you know, 2001? Just one for him. sequences. I thought, I thought it meant a, one notch too far in the fast, in the very last sequence. But, uh, you know, it's wonderful. You know, I saw that film at the Moscow Film Festival in 1968. Oh, I was there too, yes. 2001. And I was given a, um, an interest guide. So it was shown in the, in the great palace of culture. And after it was over, I asked her what the audience thought of it, and she said they doubt that the Americans really have such equipment. One of them. Well, I, I, when I said, I, I was, sorry, I was being very stupid about the, I didn't mean 2001 when I said over the top of the end. I meant, um, you know, how I love to... Oh, Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange, yes. You were right about 2001, though, too, perhaps. <laughs> Do you know, in a fury, I went to the manager, the the manager at the theatre and said, could you please explain to me what the end is about? <laughs> 2001. No. Did he? It's the embryo, you yeah, know. Yeah. And the room, the... I desperately... I mean, it's very stupid of me. But I was sort of so frustrated. I thought I'm missing something. But what well, Why did you expect the manager to, to explain to you? Because I thought he'd seen it more times than I had. <laughs> or maybe he overheard had time to resolve it, perhaps. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, you never know. Enjoy, so I'm not Do you go to see many films? Do you? Um, you know? Not many, no. no. And what sort of films would you prefer to see if you... If one, if one suddenly intrigues you, you'll go to see it, but you wouldn't normally go as a... Kind of a regular exercise. Well, you know, I wish that to God. <coughs> they'd put out. <coughs> Excuse me. I wish they'd put out some of the old French films. I'm not saying that because of him. <laughs> but, you know, Les Enfants du Paris. Pierre um, Messier de Week. Grand Illusion. My God, at one time you produced some pictures, yes? Oh, yeah. Didn't they? Wonderful. I mean, Stroheim in Grand Illusion, great growing a oh, flower yeah. in a pot, and that sort of stuff. And the, and the show that the, the men put on when they get out the dresses, the women's dresses out of the hampers. You don't see that now. I mean, well, that sensibility is oh, gone. Gone. It's all gone. I mean, it was even lost in France in World War II. The Grand Illusion, I think, was not uh, very popular during World War II in France. Uh, I mean, the whole idea that that uh, you know the Germans might be human beings. And, uh, That's right. Are you friendly with uh, Stanley Kubrick? Speaking of 2001. Um. 
I'll tell you what, we have telephone conversations. Mm. That's a lot already. <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather and Hubert's father were um, in the same medical practice together really? in the Bronx. And uh, I used to hear growing up that um, uh, it was a very you know, strict Jewish household, and they were worried that, that he wasn't going to become a doctor because he used to run around with a camera all the time. My son was a doctor. Yeah, <laughs> and they said, if Stanley's never going to amount to anything, he goes out in Central Park, he has a, uh, an old uh, Bolex, that he had a 16 millimeter, and he carried it in a brown paper bag, and he used to pull it out and take pictures of people, and then put it back in the bag. You know, not and enough directors do that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, a lot of them can't even take snaps with a good camera, with a with a with a light, you know, with an automatic camera. I, I never understand it. Huh. Well, 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 uh, sorry, interruption. Yeah, no, no. I didn't know that about him, you see. Yeah, by, the no, time he was, he, by the time he was 19, he was a star photographer for Look Magazine. He was indeed. Yes, that he I know. Yeah, he so his family, didn't, they, weren't, they needed to be in the concert for long. No. He was one of the few uh, directors left who's still soldiering on in, the, in your tradition of uh, perfectionism and uh, visuals. And visuals. Big, and and visuals. Big That's you know, it. He doesn't make... Mm. Telling the story with pictures, pictures again. You see, I loved the Irish picture that he did. Yeah. Uh, Barry Lyndon. Barry Lyndon. Barry Lyndon. I thought it was just wonderful, and the critics just murdered it. Yeah. I thought it was a wonderful bit of filmmaking. Yeah. I don't know why they went for it so badly. I think it was it was miscast, wasn't it? I think it was Round mostly the yeah. British. It was mostly the British. I mean, the, some Americans liked it very much. I think Barry Lyndon. It was, it was more in England that he was murdered. Or is that right? Yeah, well, in was America there was, a, there was a support for the film. Yes, it's in England. Because Derek Mouse. Yes, in America, I'm, I'm not in England. But problem. maybe the English thought, you know, it was not an American to show the 18th century. I think Derek Malcolm more or less dismissed it by describing it as a series of moving Gainsborough portraits. That was, uh, <laughs> well, it's completely untrue, you see. Well, it's a fantastic. I mean, that's, that's the most superficial way of uh, discussing the film. It's just uh, there's so much more to it than that. You know, not to be written, please, what I think was wrong with it, really, was the miscasting of Ryan right and me. No, absolutely. Because you should, you should have chuckled at him yeah. the whole time. You should have felt like Sam Spiegel. You sort of laugh. The more wicked he becomes, the more you laugh, as long as it's not directed in your direction. And that was standing in the way uh, for some Americans to accept the film. And for English, too, I'm sure, especially. But uh, the image of Ryan O'Neill didn't exactly fit. Didn't do it. The, the period or the image, yeah. Would you well, I, meant the I meant you didn't laugh at him. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Jack Nicholson had played it, for instance... You played the next one. You, you, yeah, there's, there's you, a certain you, humor. Yeah, do you know, I didn't see that. That's actually, that's good Shining. But if he had played Barry Lyndon, the way he played Shining, that could have been <laughs> right, right. bad too. <laughs> Very strange. What do you took on the phone with him? Photography? Cameras? Oh, technicians, <laughs> screen size, subject. <laughs> the only place to make it is a communist country, that's what we... <coughs> <laughs> you know, you spoke about the ending of Strange Love, but you know there was another ending that had been shot. Really? Uh, they filmed it and at great expense, and then they threw it out. Where, as pie. I understand it, there was a pie throwing contest, with a pie throwing orgy between the Russians and the Americans, and the war room fills up with pies, so they sort of throw them. But in my up. book, I I publish it still in my book. Yeah, <laughs> they were, I, Peter said it. Was, but then Kennedy got yes, it was because Kennedy got How killed. So they I were, never knew they were that. afraid to be so frivolous. Mm -hmm. Well, there, in fact, there's a looped word in the in the film, isn't there? Where, when Slim Pickens is reading out the list of items, the prophylactic, the Bible, the, the, the stick of chewing gum, and he says, "Hell, you could have a good time in Dallas with this yeah. package of things." Uh -huh. they, they loop Dallas to Vegas <laughs> because there's two months after. Why was, it, why was it held back? Early the next year. Yeah. I know that January Columbia didn't want to release the film. They thought it was going to be a disaster. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah they really were sure. They saw the film three weeks before. I can well believe it. They, they said it's impossible. We can't release that film. That's one of the it's terrible make... troubles nowadays, you see. Yeah, uh, what they like to say no, no, is 
what's it like? And if you can say it's a cross between Ghostbusters and The Godfather, you're in business. <laughs> But if you can't categorize it, you're, you're in trouble. They said we can't release that movie. It's going to not make a buck. Yeah, that's right. In your in your view, uh, or from your point of view, when did that start? That kind of thinking, where you were up against a different uh, mentality than you used to be in the late '60s. Or the S- since Easy Rider. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Why? I mean, that's a cl- no, but I think you're right. That's a clear answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, more or less, yes. Was that the period or the? Well, there, there, there you see, they, I can't say. No, what? Because they're always looking for the key. I know Sam always thought that I had some secret cupboard I went to, and he'd say, "Baby, go away and think about it." <laughs> and he really thought I went somewhere, and. Uh, they thought they'd suddenly got it with Easy Rider, young people, not too much experience. Uh, I remember a cameraman I know who was put up for a job and he, he, he was turned down. He was about uh, 55 years old and he went back to them. He was turned down and he went back and he said, Look, would you be good enough to tell me why you turned me down? They said, well, one, you're too old, and two, you're too experienced. Mm. No, that, and they were serious. They thought, just Perry, thank you. Yes. Peter? I might as well. Yes. Do you, do you ever regret a little that perhaps you would like to have made more films in, in your career? Yes. Of course I do. The best script that Robert Bolt and I ever did was a, a the story, the true story of the bounty. The bounty. Oh yes, we that had, was a film. I think I, I was only talking to him the other day, and we both thought it was the best work we'd ever done. There was only two films, wasn't it? Uh, not in the end. At the beginning, we thought of it as two films. We thought were, I'd, we thought that. The mutiny was one very good one, leading up to the mutiny. It's a fantastic story. I mean, Blackie, far from being a villain, was a rather humorous, wonderful navigator, you know. And then the story of Pitcairn is a, you know, there's enough for two or three films there, too. And so we thought it, then gave that up and, and turned it into one. So your ideal now of the project would have been as one as one film, yes. not two. Mm. I, I don't know. If you if somebody said, "Look, you can do either," I'd say two. Mm. You know, but uh, you have to be practical, and I think that wouldn't be possible, really. And I don't know how you get. I suppose somebody will do it one day, or perhaps they've done it. You know, how you get people into a theatre? It wasn't both the one. scriptwriter of the Roger Donaldson the what? He got the yeah. 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 Yes, well. made a film, The Bounty, with Mel Gibson and Nancy That's right. Well, he, he was. So you see, what they... Dino took the script, got hold of Robert, and he had had a terrible stroke and badly needed some money, and they cut out all the expensive stuff of the script they'd done together. And as a matter of fact, that was a wonderful thing in America. Dino offered it to several American directors and they turned it down because of me, because they knew what had happened. He's here, I'm told. Do you know? Mm. Yes, he was here. Yes, he waited on me last night at the girl. <laughs> and I, for, one, for years, was waiting in breathless anticipation to see what you would do visually with the South Pacific. I was dying to see that. Nobody's touched them. Absolutely dying to see that. Do you know, we had we had one of the first one of the knew where they were going to shoot it. It honestly was. I mean, I said to Robert the other day, we had we had last Sunday lunch together, 
And I said, oh, God, do you agree with me about this thing? And he said, yes, I do. 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 I can't get the words out. Yeah, it's just awful to me. I mean, so moving. But he's fine up top. I know. And it was a damn shame, because we we got pretty well all of it in. That Pacific stuff, I mean, reefs and, you know, fame on the side of me. I don't know, do you know the South Pacific? Well, I knew a little bit, but I mean, I heard you were down there for months and months. Months, uh, we were. Uh, planning scenes, uh, looking at the uh, other sun and this and that water was and everything that it would have been. I'm sure you would have had it just great. We had one, we had one scene. I was telling somebody about the other day. In fact, Robert talked about it. He's one of his favourites. It was, uh, they tried to get round the hall, which is true. Yeah. And they had to turn the, the ice and stuff, you know, stop them. And they had, Bly decided to turn round and go, go back by, by Cape Town, right. you see. And we had a heck of a scene. I, God would I love to have done it when Bly, after this terrible story, and a terrible story, I mean, days of battle, he's lying asleep and he suddenly wakes up. He thinks what's wrong. And there's no rocking on the ship. And he goes up to the companion, right, onto the deck, everything's white. It's all encased in snow and ice, this ship. And then he decides to turn the pillar and go round and start going towards the sun. Then the sun comes up and we have the ice melting on the ship and starting to fall in great hunks right. from the top. It was marvelous. And of course they, that was one of the scenes that went. Oh, well, I presume. I didn't see it. Where did you fall so all out of the project? It's not in here. I'm sure not. So Dave, where did you fall out of the project? Where did you cease to become involved and why? Well, Dino gave me six weeks to turn the project round, and I just sort of gave up everything to do it, and I failed to do it in six weeks. Mm. Nobody, so it was, nobody wanted it, you see. So it really was a time frame that you had in which... Time frame. And I, if I lost, I lost everything. Anybody owed me, and I, did, I took that gamble and lost. So David, can we... Yes, Ian Johnston from the Sunday Times. Oh, I didn't... Too much of this, but... Fantastic act, you know. Is, is, it a, is it a grotesque generalization to say that British film has become uh, an arm of British television? It's hard to tell one from the other, especially with Channel 4 subsidizing so many of the, of the film projects. Look, say that again. It's become a miniature film industry. Well, it's all we've got. But, I mean, the films are small. It's all we've got. Otherwise, it's American Pick. And in fact, where the epic is gone is into the miniseries. It's true. Either in Britain, like Jewel of the Crown. You're quite right, it is. You're you're absolutely absolutely right, yes. What did you think of Jewel of the Crown? And all, all the other way. Oh, I like seven or eight hours of it. <laughs> <laughs> Bride's Head was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Charles Sturridge, who directed most of that, I believe, has uh, just made a film on the handful of dust. Oh, really? Yes, it is. Any good? I got a review on the Telegraph today. It's been really the best film that the uh, critic had seen here, even though it's only in the market. Oof. Handful of dust. Yes, indeed. Even more, yes. Yeah. Did you say who the actors were? Uh, I did say who the actors were, yes, but I can't remember. Well, Angelica them. Houston is a small part. Angelica uh, uh, No, I don't remember. It's a variety of people last year. Said it told too much of a story to be of interest in this year's festival. Mm-hmm. No, I see. What, did, what did you think of Jewel, Jewel in the Crowd? I'm what do you know? I didn't see it all. I wasn't mad about some of the cast. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me. Particular, okay. No, well, you won't get an answer. So there. I understand you've been uh, working on uh, with the writer on uh, uh, autobiography. No, completely no. untrue. Really? 
What have I been working on? It was, um, a book of my about my films. Not an autobiography. It's a book about my films. And he's been going around all over the place getting stills and talking to people who work with me and that sort of thing. But it's about films I've made. You do it yourself. Not an autobiography. But you do it yourself. I, I always say that when I can't make a movie anymore, I'm going to do that myself. And try to write a funny book about movies. Uh-huh. Who's doing it? Which book? Oh my God! You asked me a thing now. It's one of the. Would I be wrong in saying Abrams, New York? Oh yes. Who does art books? Yes, Abrams. Yeah, yeah they are. It's a sort of forty dollars a throw. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Coffee. Coffee. And then you'll have your own uh, your own commentary on some of the films on the films. Stephen Silverman. Yeah, but you. Well, I've talked to him a bit, you know, about things. I've told him about making of it a bit. But it's not an right. autobiography. Oh, okay. It's a so Silverman is actually writing it. You're yes, yes, I'm not writing. doing it at all. No. Right. He asked me one day, he said, would you mind if I did a book about your films? I said, delighted. Mm. He, yeah, he did. Well, how do you, how do you uh, feel about writing an autobiography? It's something you'd like to do? or uh... um, You know, well, as I say, when I'm too old to make a movie, I, I would love to sit down and, and write a sort of funny book. Uh, because there are all sorts of yarns about the movies, which I've been closely... I mean, a couple of chapters on Sam Spiegel would be hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> but, no. Move the crew. Cr- cr- I, I just said, let me finish this, oh, okay. and I really will come. Oh, sure. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. Yeah. 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 Boy, oh boy. Mm. Look, Kazan has just published yeah, right. 850 pages of autobiography. Has he? Yes, it's it's extraordinary book. It's just fascinating. Extraordinary. Is it? The most fascinating books on the cinema, and one of the most fascinating autobiographies I've yes. ever read. Yes, that's fantastic. And yeah. outspoken. Oh, yeah. 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 He really did it. You know, it's just uh, fantastic. What, really? Came across with it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything about the private life. He was bloody good, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's quite an extraordinary. Uh, you know, water, waterfront water streetcar. Wonderful. How old would you have to be to be too old? Yeah. Well, that's a physical situation, not age. <laughs> John Houston was in no, he wasn't, was he? But he was a funny guy, John. He he used to do films, you know. And I never understood it. He could he'd finish shooting and just walk away from it. I cannot understand a director of his talent sort of not really finishing it in the cutting room. Uh, but he don't, he was, didn't seem to be interested. He, he was a, an amusing character, all right. I still like Maltese Falcon almost the best. Look, I'm sorry. Uh, you have to go. You have to go. Yeah, I think I'll be back if you want me. <laughs> Apologies for the odd dropout here and there, but I had to stop the tape several times as they brought food and wine to the table during the lunch. Now, Sir David was a 60-a-day smoker. Sadly, he died from cancer three years after this lunch, never realising his dreams of bringing Conrad's Nostromo to the big screen. However, almost 30 years later in 2017, a documentary was made called Nostromo, David Lean's Impossible Dream, which explored in detail Sir David's failed efforts to get the film produced.